Hey guys, and welcome back to Twilight Princess. Let's continue on with Lake Bed Temple. We've still got quite a ways to go, so uh, we're probably going to be here the rest of the week, I'd say. Ah, uh, Tektide over here. Take care of it. They're not really that big of a deal. They can get kind of annoying if there's two of them, though. But in this chest he was guarding, there's water bombs. Five of them this time. So we're up to 27 again. And we need to break this stalactite in order to get up on this ivy. I remember this room, like, the first time I played through it. I, for some reason, I just never thought to look up, and I'm like, there's ivy there on the wall, but there's nothing I can do to get to it. And I kept looking around in all the other places of the temple I couldn't actually do anything with, so I'm like, there has to be something to do in this room. And lo and behold, I finally looked up one day, it's like, oh, hey, look, there's a stalactite I can blow up, so... And after pulling that switch, you won't even have to deal with it anymore, because it opens that gate. This is kind of a funny room, I think. Um, if you look down... I don't want to get too close, but if you look down... Looks a little bit familiar. This is the room we were just in to get that small key earlier. So let's back up and jump onto this thing. I love killing this guy, watch this. Just falls right back into it, so... <laughs> Pretty easy battle there, I might say. Alright, uh, now let's head back over this way. This chest, for some reason, is guarded by two keys, which is kind of weird. Not really much of a guardian, but there's a small key. So let's just roll away from these guys before they can bug me too much. Jump back across, and we're going back through this door. So now when we turn to the right here... There's a boulder block in the path. I really shouldn't use a bomb arrow, but I don't care about the one arrow I'm using, so who cares. A few Helmosaurs back here, you can pretty much just roll past them without them doing anything. Sometimes the best idea is to just avoid the enemies rather than trying to kill everything. So this new enemy in here is kind of a, a dancing bug. And he hops into his bubble, taunts us, and he's pretty much invulnerable while he's in the bubble, so what should we do? Eh, let's pop his bubble. <laughs> now he's just running away from us, so... We're gonna get a much funnier way to fight him later, I'm pretty excited about that, but... <laughs> so now let's open up this door, and this actually unlocks the rest of the room. It's not a new room, it's just unlocking the rest of it, pretty much. So let's jump down and climb up this ivy here. Ah, oh, come on. There we are, we finally made it. Climb over this little barrier. I don't know why that little barrier is there, but whatever. So on the way up, you're going to be encountering a few Tektites. You actually probably want to take these out. You don't really have to, but it'll, it'll convenience you later to do so. And they can be taken out easily with a quick jump attack, as you just saw. Or I guess as you've been seeing a few times by now already. All right, I think there's one more up here. Just make sure you uh, you get the jump attack in while they're on the ground, because if you try to jump into them while they're while they're jumping, also you'll actually get hurt and get knocked back from it. So we want to climb up this ladder here, and there's a switch, or a switch, or a lever, or whatever you want to call it. There's a treasure chest back there. We can't actually get it, and we won't actually be able to get it for a little while still. And, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, it's really nothing important. It's only, it's a 50 rupee chest. They put it in this big chest so you think, oh, well, you know, maybe there's something important I need to get there. But, it's just 50 rupees, so it's not really worth the time, in my opinion, to actually go back and get it once you get the ability to do so. Anyway, that was fun. That's a cool little water slide there. Now let's just get to this middle platform where we can turn around and pull on a lever which opens the gate and allows water to flow through the room. And this, that basically flows all the way out through the middle room. And uh, we'll see that once we get there. But here you want to follow the flow of water and go through the door that you didn't go in before. Which takes you on the south side of this circular room. Ignore whatever's falling down behind me and just go through here. And as you can see, the cog is spinning around now. 
So, uh, let's just, uh, actually, what we, I think what we need to be doing is just jumping down. Oh, cool. I actually landed on this. The, the only thing is, we will actually need to be getting to this door, but not yet. We gotta go to that one over there first, so. <laughs> My cool jump was wasted, pretty much. I get the feeling there's something you can do with that long boomerang jump that I showed uh, in the forest temple in this area to kind of speed this up, but I have no idea what it would be. And that area is kind of cool. You'll see it later. There's actually nothing we can do right now. Don't you hate that? There's so many places in the temple. It's just, it looks like there's something cool you can do, and there is something cool you can do. You just can't do it yet. That's basically how things go in Zelda games. So we want to jump off here at this north door. And as you can see, further to the north, there's another big circular room. And it looks kind of important, but actually, uh, we're not going there via this room. It is important, just not yet. So we got a small key, which will open a locked door, but only in this area. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and go in there and show you what happens when you do. So, you know, it fades to black and everything, like it's this big important scene, but... Once you the door opens again and you walk through it, you find there's this big gate blocking your path, and there's not really anything you can do about it, so... I, I, you know, I guess I could have just said, there's a gate blocking your path, and you would have taken my word for it, but I just want to prove that I'm a man of my word, I guess. I don't know. So now that we're done with that, we can head back uh, through this door again. And now is when we need to be going to that east door that I landed on earlier. So let's hop on this little disc here. And wait for it to get around. To this door. The reason you want to go in this door second, and you want to go in the north door first, is because this door is locked. And you get the key in the north end. So it's not like I could have just come back and done the north part later. Alright, let's get our iron boots on. Uh, there's a few tunnels that are kind of like pushing air or something. And that'll blow you away if you don't have the iron boots equipped. There's a chest back here which contains a uh, red rupee. And there's also, it, sh it gives you a nice detail here. If you look on Link's face, the little black mask thing for the for the Zora armor is actually like on his face, so I guess that's what's allowing him to breathe. Doesn't make much sense, but if you uh, actually look at him walking around, like above the water, that's actually not on his face, so that's kind of a cool little detail, I guess. So let's take our water bomb and blow up this boulder that's blocking our path. We can't do anything about those jellyfish. I like, really want to, because they're annoying looking, but uh, nothing you do will be of any effect. We have a new sort of enemy here. Uh, these enemies have been in 3D Zelda's before. They're the big clams from uh, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, I believe, and they, uh, they attack you with their butt. They eventually figured out that it made much more sense for them just to try to snap at you instead, so that's what they do this time. The way you kill them is kind of gross, though, I think. I don't know, it's just something about it, it's just kind of weird about it. So, this is that big circular room that we tried to get into earlier, but couldn't do anything with. Oh, okay. That was kind of cheap, they landed right on me. So if we look up to see what that was... Um... <laughs> I don't know, something about this boss is just hilarious. I think it's so funny. We're fighting a giant frog. Alright, so, this guy is actually pretty easy. There's a pretty cheap way to go about doing this fight. Uh, which I can't really do yet, but what I do want to do is go ahead and get bomb arrows ready. You'll see why in a little bit. Let's just get our spin attacks going, or not. Pretty much just keep trying to rotate and hit B. Sometimes it doesn't work, though, so... When there's a few left, you might as well just do some L targets. Let's get moving. So he'll try to land on you. He'll jump up and do that. When he uh, when he misses, he'll stick his tongue out there when he falls. And then once you hit him, he'll stand back up and then start growling. At that point, shoot a bomb arrow into his mouth. Even though it explodes upon contact, he'll actually like have eaten it, and then you can attack him again. And all you have to do is just keep repeating that process, and he'll never get an attack in on you. 
So that's pretty much the cheap way of doing this. He doesn't really have any other attacks other than just jumping up and trying to land on you. So it's not like you're really missing anything by doing it that way. Ugh. Nasty. I'm not opening that thing. I know where that's been. Ah, uh, fine. Well, let's... Let's walk up to it slowly and try not to touch it. But it's a good thing that I did open this chest because it contains the claw shot, which is fun. It's like the hook shot. I don't know why they had to change it to a claw shot, but, well, there you go. So, uh, let's just demonstrate its use real quick-like. And by hooking onto that thing, you open the gate and open yourself a way out. So now that we've got the claw shot, we can go to a whole bunch more places in this temple, so stay tuned.